Bonjour. Thank you for joining me today for my class. I'm Jennifer Ferrance. If you look for me on Ravelry or on Instagram, you'll find me as Tricolore. And I'm a French teacher, I'm a homeschooler, and I love all forms of creativity, um, drawing, painting, sculpting, and fiber arts are my specialty. So um, weaving, knitting, spinning, I've tried pretty much everything with string or fiber and I've loved it. For this class, I'd like to share with you some strategies that have worked for me to stay mindful not only when choosing projects, but also in my regular life. Staying mindful means coming out of the past where we might be having some depressive or ruminating thoughts, coming out of a future where we might be pulled into uh, thinking about anxious thoughts or planning or spiraling into situations that aren't even here. Mindfulness focuses on right now, how your body is feeling, what thoughts you're having at the, this current moment, what your emotions are right now. And we think about all of these things without judging them. We just notice that they're there. And then that helps us to make decisions about what we need right now, what's best for us and what we can handle. So I hope that these tips will be something that not only will help you with your upcoming creative projects, but will also help you in your life as you go forward in stressful times and in times that are not stressful. Mindfulness can help in any situation just to make us feel more grounded, more balanced, and just like we have a little bit more control over things that are going on because we always can stop and take a minute to go inward and breathe. That is something we can always control. So let's take a minute now and do just that. We're gonna go inward and we're gonna focus on how we're feeling now, what we're thinking, and just sort of notice what we need at this current moment in time. I hope you enjoy the class today. And please look for me on Instagram as Tricolore and you can follow along to see what sorts of inspiration I have for you to keep your creativity going. Also, I'd love it if you would reach out to me with a message or um, with a comment. I love to hear from my students and connecting with new people. As you try to decide what you want to work on, you might have different choices of different types of fiber pro projects. If you pick up your drop spindle or your knitting needles, from different types of projects, circular needles or double pointed needles, crochet hook or a bobbin from a spinning wheel, what sort of emotions or feelings are emerging with each of these tools or items? That can kind of lead you in a direction as to where you feel like you would want to go with a project that would be best for your state of mind right now. Then you want to take a look at if you, let's say you choose knitting, pull out some different yarns, different weights, different colors, um, different textures of yarn, and just pick up each one and feel, again, what emotions are coming to the surface. Is there anything you're being drawn to at the moment? And as you feel more drawn to a certain color, just put your hand on it or pick it up and hold it. Feel what your initial feeling is. Do you have an aversion to it? Do you like the feel of it? Notice the weight of the yarn, the um, thickness of the strand. And normally you would do this much more slowly with each one, one at a time. So I ended up deciding on this skein and it's from Belfast Mini Mills in Prince Edward Island. It's a kid mohair and merino. Oh. And there was something about the color, the feel. It just made me feel like I wanted to make something out of it. So I'm just going to hold it for a while and see, is there a project in mind? Do I have something that comes to the surface that I want to make out of this? Place your hands on it. Hold on to it in different ways. Just see if anything is coming to mind. For me, it would be something like a cowl or something cozy. 
since I feel like my soul needs some nurturing right now. If you're somebody like me who likes to journal or doodle or draw while you think things through, this is another approach that you can use to try to choose a project with your state of mind in mind. You can just start drawing on the corner of a page and leave some space at the top for writing some things down. And you might want to start with thinking about just checking in with a few mindful moments. We're just going to take some time to think about what's going on inside and how that can help us choose a project that will be most beneficial to us right now. Um, our body and our minds are so connected. If we can think about what's going on in our body, our feelings and our thoughts, all, th parts, all three parts can work together to help us understand um, and have a better awareness of what we need at the moment in knitting and in life in general. So the first thing we're gonna do is think about just our body. Just to try to ignore thoughts and feelings for the moment and just think about, do you have any tension? Um, anywhere in your body? Is there anything that needs to be released? Is there anything that feels very relaxed? Just take a minute and check in with some deep breaths, noticing how your body is feeling. Next, you're going to think about, or more you're going to feel, what's going on inside with your feelings and your emotions. So taking the focus off of the body and focusing more on what emotions are surfacing. Are you feeling angry, anxious, happy, joyful? Just take a minute and notice how you're feeling. You don't have to try to figure out why you're feeling these things. You don't have to say they're good or bad. We're just going to take a minute and notice what the feelings are so that we can make decisions based on what the reality is for us at this moment. What is the reality of how our body feels? What is the reality of what emotions we're having at the moment? The third thing we're going to focus on is thoughts. Sometimes thoughts and feelings can get confused. So we're going to notice any thoughts that are coming to the surface. We might think something like, I'm afraid. And the feeling that goes with that is a jittery, anxious feeling. Or we might feel something, something like, I'm excited, looking forward to something. And that can have a very similar feeling in the body. And it can have very similar effects on the body. So noticing the thoughts that are coming up. Are your thoughts racing? Are you having a recurring thought that keeps coming up? Are your planning thoughts popping into your mind? Are you ruminating over things that have happened in the past? Are you focusing on what could be happening in the future that isn't happening right now. Using all three of these things that we just focused on, we're now going to consider your emotional needs and your emotional limits. And these are your emotional needs and your emotional limits at this moment, at the current moment you're in. A lot of times when we think about mindfulness, we don't realize what that means. It's a very popular word right now. But mindfulness can help you pull yourself out of depressive states and anxious states. Depressive states keep you in the past. Anxious states pull you into the future. But mindfulness is the current moment you are in. So while you're being mindful of the current moment, try to decide, what do you need right now? You might want to be distracted, or you might feel like you need to dive into those emotions. And either way, whatever you decide, you can choose your knitting project, you can choose 
what you do next in life, taking care of yourself with love, even if you dive into those emotions. To think about whether you want to distract yourself or dive in, start to explore how you're feeling again. Do you need more energy? Or are you feeling too wound up and you want to calm down? Is your brain racing through lots of anxious thoughts and you need a distraction? Or do you have something on your mind that you'd like to contemplate and meditate on while you work on a project? Think about your limits. If you're feeling sad and overwhelmed, will meditating on this and delving into these feelings on your own be helpful to you? Or is this something that you think would be better to discuss with the help of a nurturing therapist? If you're feeling anxious, stressed, lots of racing thoughts, or worst case scenarios, is it helpful to you to think through all of the possibilities of a future that isn't here? Or would your mind be able to let go of some of these if you had a powerful distraction? For example, when I feel like I'm able to dive into my thoughts, spinning on my spinning wheel with certain fibers is mindless work for me. I don't have to think about it. So I can have a conversation with others. I can think through things I want to figure out. I can meditate, listen to music. It's like knitting rows and rows of stockinette in the round. When I feel overwhelmed with anxious thoughts, I often choose a distraction to see if that will help. If I want to grab my knitting, I choose to work on something with a chart I have to follow, rows I have to count, or I work on designing something new, like this cabled cowl with the pico edge. A stockinette cowl was perfect when I just wanted to meditate. Just cast on, put it in the round, and knit and knit and knit. And then I had this project that was something I didn't have to think about, but also was interesting. It was a linen stitch, and you use yarn from your stash, stash, and you leave a long tail at the ends that you then can turn into fringe. I really love using shawls for mindful knitting. Uh, most shawls that I've made have lots of sections that are just the same kind of stitch over and over, like this Stonington shawl with lots of garter stitch. And then the edging was um, a lace pattern. You could choose whatever you wanted. And it takes a chart and you have to keep track of your rows. So it's a lot more concentration. It's a good distraction. The pie shawl is lots of circles. You put yarn overs in whenever you want. Um, these are both shawls by Elizabeth Zimmerman. And then at the very end, again, you put a lace edging on it and that's where you really have to concentrate. Um, so having a lace edging that you're working on at the same time as another shawl where you're working on more garter stitch or stockinette stitch or something basic, that way you have a project that can distract you and a project that you can use for when you're ready to just meditate or you hopefully even want to just have a conversation with somebody. This is a project from my loom and I alternated between working on tabby and doing a different pattern, I can't remember what it was now, um, that was a little bit more complicated um, for me as a new weaver. And setting up the loom itself was a good distraction as well. And if you're feeling like you want a distraction, some of these books are really great for more complex patterns and things you might not have tried before. Um, I really love these two about knitting new scarves and knitting new mittens and gloves. This book has a lot of really great charts, and it takes a lot of concentration to work on charts. I think these are not just for babies and kids. This one also has really great charts and interesting patterns to work with. This is more Fair Isle. The prior one was more Intarsia. If you speak another language, you can get a book in a foreign language, and that gives you a really good thing to concentrate on and something to let your mind work on. Um, I started working on designing my own sweater based on this book. It was really um, quite a lot of math, which I really enjoy as a distraction. You can get knitting graph paper online, and it's um, set up specifically for the gauge of your yarn. So you type in what it is, and you can see that I've got all kinds of things drawn and written and figured out here, and it was a really great distraction at the beginning of the pandemic.
teaching yourself a new skill is something that's also really great to occupy your mind. And I love this book, Respect the Spindle. It teaches you how to use a drop spindle. You don't need a lot of supplies to do that. Um, this book is really great too for spinning and it focuses quite a bit on the spinning wheel. Um, Adventures in Yarn Farming is really a nice one for if you just want to read um, something and focus on, on knitting and you can't concentrate on a project. Um, these are a couple of books by Elizabeth Zimmerman, The Pie Shawl and The Stoning Tinner in that first book. And then The Knitting Workshop is a really good one. You can get a DVD to go with it. And it's just something you can keep yourself focused on fiber even if you can't get the energy to do a project. Teeny Tiny Moki Moki, this is a great one. They're very fast projects and they're super fun. It's something just to cheer you up a little bit. Pulling out some of your old magazines can give you some inspiration when you are feeling like you don't have the energy to pick up fiber at the moment. Sometimes we are so overwhelmed we don't even feel like picking up our knitting or getting out our wheel. We can barely find the energy to get out of bed. But sometimes we are overburdened, not with fatigue, but with energy. We're starting so many projects, we feel overwhelmed by them. We aren't finishing anything. We need to calm the mind down and turn the focus inward. Now we are going to practice tuning into our minds and bodies with a guided meditation. Close your eyes and notice your breathing. You do not need to change the way you are breathing. Just notice it entering your body, filling your lungs, and its path out of your body as something changed and different. Feel the coolness at the tip of the nose and the warmth as the breath leaves again. Notice that your whole body is breathing this breath. Each cell is using the oxygen that is entering through your nose. Feel the radiance of breath and life entering your body and spreading its warmth and perfect energy from your center, through your torso, your arms and legs, your toes and fingers, and magnificently and brilliantly through your head. Now, focus on your thoughts. What is coming to mind? Something probably popped into your head as you were focusing on your breathing. Is it a planning thought? A scared thought? A happy thought? An excited thought? You may be having a few thoughts, or you may be noticing a large number of thoughts. Allow yourself to experience these thoughts just as they are. You do not need to stop them from coming. It is your mind's job to create thoughts. There's nothing wrong with what is happening. Mindfulness and meditation do not erase thoughts. We are not trying to have a clear blank mind. We are striving for noticing our state of mind and allowing it to be there, recognizing it without judging it. When we notice the thought, we can imagine it as a leaf on a stream and let it pass in its own time. Or maybe the image of a cloud floating along in the sky allows you to see that thoughts pass naturally. More thoughts will arise and we allow them to pass. We do not try to stop the cloud, holding on to the thought, dwelling on it and ruminating over it or planning with it. We allow it to exist and continue on its way. As we do this, we can recognize what our mental space is at this moment. We can become present with ourselves, our full selves. This allows us to live from a place of authenticity and awareness that can help us to make choices that will nurture and balance our minds and souls. Now let's move our focus to our emotions. How are you feeling? What emotions are rising to the surface with the thoughts that are coming forward? Allowing yourself to really notice the thoughts and emotions that are present as you breathe a few more breaths.
Now, notice if you are having any aversion to any of these thoughts or feelings. Are you trying to push any of them away? Sometimes what we are wanting to push away is what we can use to heal if we are able to approach it. Do you have the space to feel deeply right now? At times, our emotions are too overwhelming or our thoughts are racing so much that we need to find a singular focus for our mind. Other times, we are so overwhelmed that we feel we don't have the energy for anything. What do you need right now? A calming focus to your mind? Mental stimulation to give yourself energy? What are you feeling you need? If you are about to pick up some fiber therapy, what do you need from your creative project? For a few breaths, just consider. Return now to your breath. Feel your breath moving from your center to your fingers and toes. Feel the space around you filled with energy and light. You are radiating awareness and warmth. You are filled with breath that brings new days and the strength to meet new challenges, even the most challenging cables and intarsia. Your body is full of ability to accomplish beauty and creativity, weaving fibers and threads, spinning hairs and fleece, and making the world a more beautiful place. Breathe in a full, deep breath and thank yourself for taking this time to focus on your health and well-being, for being willing to dive into your thoughts and feelings, and for putting love into the world fiber by fiber.